everyone. First and foremost, Happy New Year. I'm so glad to be back with our team doing these live Q&As for everyone, helping educate all those that want to learn more about real estate. I'm Donica Patton, the host of Where Do You Go Now? And my team and I have created this live Q&A that we're going to start doing after this new year and uh, get back in the swing of things. So welcome everyone. Happy new year. It's going to be a great 2021. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Azumi. Very honored to be working with her for over a year now on our team. And I'm learning so much about uh, everything to do with green homes, green mortgages, which we're going to learn about today. So without further ado, Azumi, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Danica. I am so excited to be back again. And I'm so excited to have William on our call today. Um, so let me introduce William. William Brown is a National Renovation Sales Manager at Finance of America Mortgage, LLC. He brings a depth of knowledge and insights gained over time with over uh, more than 20 years of experience in construction trades and 15 years in the mortgage and housing industries. During the past 10 years, he has built and managed renovation and construction ops for two national lenders which served retail, wholesale, NDC and delegated origination channels. Close to 8,000 renovation and construction loans have gone through his operation centers. Each received project management support to assist the borrower, mortgage advisor, realtor, and contractor prior to closing and high touch draw administration services post-closing. In the interest of improving the products throughout its lifespan, William has also written product guidelines, trainings, and marketing materials for all participants in the renovation loan process. So what we are interested in learning from you, William, today is the renovation uh, loans and construction loans and, and how it translates to green homes, which is my specialty. So um, if you can just kind of briefly tell us about what renovation loans are uh, in case uh, some of the audience do not know about it. Okay, so thank you. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, I look forward to helping as many people as possible get the home of their dreams. That's also energy efficient, <laughs> right? Um, so renovation loans are, they're all first mortgages, but they're unique in that they finance, if you're purchasing a home, it finances the purchase price which is called the acquisition, plus whatever improvements you want to make. And so if we're talking about green homes, then we're talking about looking at the energy consumption of a particular house. Mm -hmm. And so, which I think people often underestimate, and I'm in the Midwest, and so your utility bill can have a really wild swing. Right. Like in California, in the summertime, your demand for air conditioning can be off the chart, right? So, so I think that's a really important part of home ownership that people overlook. Um, for the environment as well as their economy. So renovation loans are, they're offered by HUD through FHA, the FHA 203K, and by Fannie Mae, who has a product called HomeStyle. They've been mm -hmm. around for, uh, since 1968. Wow, I didn't realize so, that. HUD has an energy mortgage that is connected to a 203K. Fannie Mae has an energy mortgage connected to their HomeStyle. Um, mm -hmm. We actually have a variant of that which just finances you, to, um, uh, what do you call it? appliances. Right. Appliances or new windows, new doors. So really they, uh, they, let they let customers take advantage of improvements in technology as part of the acquisition or retrofitting an existing home. You can do them as a purchase or a refi, but they're all fully amortized mortgages. So that's different mm -hmm. than a home equity line or a line of credit. This is securitized by your house. Right, right. So um, what, what can uh, homeowners or home buyers can um, expect to do with these home loans, like you you were saying, the energy efficiency and um, some appliances you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, how do that? How do they exactly look like? Okay, so so I'm going to buy a house, and Izumi is my agent, and she's helped me find my dream house, but it's not. It's a little old. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with the old one. So we can do everything to the house. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put in gas-filled triple pane coated windows. 
very expensive items, right? right. Um, but I live in the desert and it gets really hot and the sun's really bright. So I want to protect my, my investment by managing the UV light that comes through the house as well as being able to control the temperature. Right. So I can basically do anything that's supported by the appraisal. So I'm going to take my old house and I'm going to make it as green as possible. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm, that means I may add layers of insulation. I may replace existing insulation. Um, I will make sure that all my pipes are insulated. We lose a lot of energy with hot water pipes running through houses that are uninsulated. Mm -hmm. because the ambient temperature takes the heat off the pipes right um, you know we might have an older hvac system mm -hmm. that is not just not very efficient i may not have any solar i could add solar um, if i'm in a place where i have consistent breeze i might add a small wind turbine like there's just so many options now that that help that can help people manage their own energy needs mm -hmm. that, that people aren't aware you can finance a lot of that into your home purchase mm -hmm. or into your remodel mm -hmm. So that so the buyer when when the buyer is actually in the process of writing offers mm -hmm. and getting the loan approved, you come in in that process and 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 how you de how do you determine how much more to add to the purchase price? So what we're going to need we're well so first the borrower is going to have a budget they're going to have right. as much money as they can borrow. Mm -hmm. Now the loans that we offer are they all have lending limits. We don't have there's no jumbo renovation loans. So okay. whatever your conforming limit is, high balance is okay. That's going to be right. the most we can lend, right? Right. So we start with the math of what's your purchase price? Right. How much can you afford to borrow? Right. And then ideally, the borrower is talking to someone like Izumi or their other agent to figure out, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Do you think it will add value to the house? Right. So we're getting a group conversation right. in your market, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we're going to get a, an estimate from the borrower, and we're going to put that together with the there's, there's finance, they, they call them fees because you have to call it a fee because of regulations. There's services that are financed into the loan. Right. So we're financing the services for an inspection, not mm -hmm. a property inspection, but a construction inspection. If I pay a contractor to replace the floors in my house, right. I don't want to send him, I don't want to write him a check until the floors are in and inspect it to make sure they're in right. right. So that we finance the cost of that. We finance title updates. Um, we finance the cost of paying for the inspections. So mm -hmm. those are in the loan as fees but they actually are real work. Like it's mm -hmm. the, the junk fee. Mm -hmm. So we're going to calculate your loan amount based on purchase price or mm -hmm. payoff. It's a free mm -hmm. Plus what you estimate the cost of repairs is going to be. So at the beginning, right. it's all estimation. Right. And then that's what we're going to prove. We're going to underwrite the estimation. Right. Give you a conditional commitment, like a regular mortgage. Right. And then you're going to produce a bid by who's going to actually do the work. Most mm -hmm. of them require one general contractor who manages all the subs. Right. And so you're going to have that person and they're going to produce a bid. We do need the bid and material and labor. And that's so that you can compare contractors because the average person can't look at two people's bids and know if it's the same, if right. there's a line item breakdown. So there's a breakdown there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we order an as is as completed value appraisal. So that's different. Most purchases are happening with the, an as is appraisal, which is ordered right. as soon as the purchase agreement is written. Right. Because in my world for a purchase, we're going to get an as completed appraisal, but I can't order that until I can tell the appraiser, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. So he's going to compare it to houses that are like my house when it's done, as opposed to how it sits today. Right. So that's a big difference. And that's why mostly they work because we're looking at the future value based on your proposed renovations. Okay. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, the home style I like a lot. It's Fannie Mae's product and I like it because it's simple. Mm -hmm. HUD has some some more HUD guidelines that you have to follow, which aren't I onerous, they, but there's more guidelines. Fannie Mae said if the value is supported by the appraisal and it's connected to the property, you can do it. So that oh, means it's so much simpler, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, so I like that. And I think that that's so it mirrors the, the regular mortgage process the way we do it here at Finance of America. We're doing all these things at the same time. So we're not waiting, doing this and waiting until this is done to do that. Once we get your conditional approval, we're working on clearing your credit income asset conditions. We're talking to you, helping you get your bid together, find your contractor. When you have your contractor, we're vetting your contractor, doing our diligence to make sure that they're they're sound and reputable. All that's happening at the same time. Right. And so then, can can a buyer come to you for conditional approval before they actually find a property? I think that's a better thing to do. They definitely can. Yeah. And 
and what I like doing with my buyers is explaining how they can leverage using a renovation loan to buy more house mm -hmm. and to shop better because right. houses that you might like, but if you're unaware of a renovation loan option, if you walk into the house and you see that it's old and it's dated and maybe it smells funny and the windows are single pane and you want to change these things, all you, all you have in your brain is cash register noises, right? <laughs> yeah. You have no idea how much it costs. Right, right, right. <laughs> you don't know how much you can afford. Mm -hmm. So as the pre-approval, we, we work backwards from the most you can borrow. Right. We divide that up. Say you're qualified for 500000 mm -hmm. Well, you could buy a house for 500000 right? You, mm -hmm. you could actually buy it for 525000 if you had a 5% down payment, right? Right. But what if you bought it for three seventy five and you put one hundred and twenty five into it? Right. Still five hundred thousand, but now yeah. your house may appraise at five fifty or six fifty. Yeah. Somewhere in there, right? So, right. and it helps them shop better because they, right. they they know where the limit is, and then they can decide how to slice the pie between purchase mm -hmm. and renovations. Mm -hmm. I think right. it gives them more options. Right. Right. So so it really like me. Uh, myself as a realtor really should be working with you and the buyers all at the same time so I, that, I we like can, that yeah we can coordinate better right. so now so so this was a purchasing scenario and you can you also t tell us about the uh, renovation scenario so if you have a home like if i, I have a home i think mm -hmm. i talked to you about yeah, my you home um yeah. So my home is about only about 15 years old, but we found out that we have a lot of missing insulations in my <laughs> in the wall, <laughs> and and you know and our windows are to double pane, but they're not the best. You know I can I can feel the difference in temperatures when I mm -hmm. when I actually stand next to the windows. So if somebody like myself want to make my existing home more efficient energy efficient i can i can utilize this loan correct that's correct it's going to be a refinance transaction mm -hmm. so you're going to we're going to pay off your existing note right and your new loan will include the amount you owed mm -hmm. plus the amount you borrowed for the renovations right so you you come out of it with one mortgage again one fixed right. rate mortgage right but you you when it closes we set up an escrow for your renovation funds and then I as see. your builder builds we pay him so you have money available to get your windows, to pay the installer, mm -hmm. to pay the inspectors. Mm -hmm. City permits are all included. Everything mm -hmm. can be included in that. So, so the fund stays in the escrow, and you approve you uh, what's uh, you approve the release of those funds as it goes as, as the construction gets completed. That's correct. So it, you know, for some people that uh, some people might have a lot of equity, and they would choose to do a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Right. Right. You're on your own when you do that. Yeah. You, you are you are shopping and vetting your contractor. You're managing him, paying him. Mm -hmm. You're managing all that your own, right? Right, right. So the renovation loan may may be more complicated to get through. Right. But you have a lender who is who's basically in your corner. So you have you have an advocate, right? We're gonna mm -hmm. review your contractor to mm -hmm. make sure he's he's sound. Mm -hmm. We're going to review your bid to make sure it's complete and it's not a low ball bid because you don't want to, somebody who's hungry for work and he quotes you $49,000 on a $69,000 job. Once he starts, he's just going to be knocking on your door for more right. money. Right. Didn't charge you enough to begin right. with. Mm -hmm. So we try and prevent, those are the three biggest things that can happen. That, mm -hmm. I mean, besides human humanity, okay? I'm not going to say they're easy. You have human beings involved right. with human beings. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all kind of stuff can happen right. during a three or six month build, right? Right. But I think most of the guys that are working and the women that are working, they're the good people left standing after the debacle of, you know, the mortgage collapse. Right. I think there's a lot of family businesses. There's a lot of independent contractors. A lot of people that want to do the work that mm -hmm. are qualified mm -hmm. and understand what they're doing. Right. So you can, but there aren't enough of them. So it is difficult to find the contractors because that's a different conversation anyway yeah. different conversations no <laughs> but but do you actually um do you have to use certain contractors like that you approve or do you have some systems or as consumer or homeowners uh do we have to find the, the contractors ourselves and then turn it over the turn over their bill to you how does that yeah. work so you guys are going to find the contractor i see um, 
and I don't know any lenders that, that allow the owner to do their own work. It's called self-help. Right. Right. And the we don't, it's not that we, we're mean and nasty and we don't want to. It's that we don't have any leverage over a homeowner who's building on his house. You, you get into a situation where right. the, the contractor's home is never finished. Mm -hmm. because it's not his day job. He's always building on somebody else's house. Right. So even if someone's talented and can do the work, it, it, it's not their day job. <laughs> but we can use family members. Um, we can use friends. All we're going to do is look at them to make sure they're licensed and that they are competent to do the work. And I think we're all frozen. Oh, no. Let's wait here a minute. I don't even know if you can hear me anymore. Let's see if you come back. I can hear you just fine, William. I think Azumi may have froze. Okay. <laughs> she's in the she's in the cold. She's in the cold. All right. Well, while she okay. she's okay, you're here. Back. You're here. Okay. You're back. <laughs> okay. Was I frozen too? You were frozen on my end. I think I was frozen on your end. Right. <laughs> That's good now. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't remember. I think I said we like you can't do self help, but you can use if you have relatives. We don't, if you have a relative, we're going to have you get two bids because I yeah. know he's going to give you a discount or she's going to give you a discount, but I right. want to make sure that we fund your escrow enough so that if they get hurt or they can't finish it, we could pay someone else. To I see. So it doesn't have to be like, you, you don't have to be using certain kind of uh, contractors that may be approved by the lenders or anything. So no. Okay, so that's- yeah, we, don't, that's we don't approve contractors because of legal liability. If I approve right. them, that has legal implications. Right. I, I can approve them in the sense that I'm checking their public records for credit history and mm -hmm. vendor, how they pay their vendors. Mm -hmm. and if they have a history, you know, if they're felons or whatever, I can do that. Right. I can't approve the quality of the work that he's promising to do. Yeah. And seen it. Yeah. So that's where we come in. And, and so most lenders, don't have approved lists. Some people do. I think if you're trying to manage a renovation and you can't find a builder, that mm -hmm. that's the first problem you need to solve. Right. If I were to solve it for you, right. I, don't think, I don't think you really own that because because you got your builder from me. Right. Right. Yeah, I see. So so my I think my my biggest question is how competitive are these loans? Like the the uh, home style or green choice. EM, um, I mean, you know, especially now when the rate is so low, anybody, I mean, you know, anybody with decent credit can get a pretty decent rate, right? right? right. So, how, is it or how um, attractive is it for any homeowners or home buyers to seek this particular kind of mortgage? So, the, the, the rate is going to be higher. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually a half a point to a point higher. Okay. Um, and, and that's really a function of the market because when we securitize the loans, there's not really any collateral. So um, the rate's going to be higher. Mm -hmm. I think most of the loans that I've locked since September have been in the mid to low threes. Mm -hmm. So there may be a half a point if you could get 2.79 and, and mm -hmm. you do your renovation loan at three and an eighth or three and a quarter, you're about a half a point off, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is still a pretty decent rate. Um, yeah. Um, but the comparison isn't so much about the rate, it's about your house and, and what other alternatives you have. So mm -hmm. if your choice is, if you have enough equity and you can do a HELOC and you get your HELOC, which is based on prime plus or minus. Right. And, and it actually is at the discretion of the bank. So that's right. kind of the downfall of HELOCs is they right. really are discretion. The bank can decide to freeze your line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're yeah, stuck. It happens. <laughs> it happens, right? So that's yeah. the, that's the only downside to HELOCs. They're simpler, right. they're cheaper, they're faster to get the money. Right. So you're looking at your options, right? I can, and I tell people, here's your choices. You can put it on your credit card. Ouch. Uh, you could liquidate your savings and your retirement. Ouch. You could borrow that's from right. family or friends. <laughs> that's like a train wreck. <laughs> right. Or, yeah. you, or you could pay the half a point or three quarters or even a point more, and and first do the house and then figure out the rate. Right. So a lot of people will, if they take a higher rate, they will do the house and then they'll refi right. the, the other rate when they're done, if that rate's right. still available. Oh, yes. That's that's a good point that you can actually, act after you get, get it all done, you can refinance again. Correct. Right. So the goal is to get your home the way you want it, right? You're trying right. to create your dream home. So if we, right. if we keep that as the focus, then the rest of the things, they're important. Like your rate's right. really important. I'm not going to say it's not. Yeah. Because it impacts your payment. 
Yeah. But if you can make the payment in route to getting your dream home or getting your home energy, ener- energy more, more energy efficient, more accommodating mm-hmm. for your lifestyle, right. whatever, then, then you do that first. Right. And then from that place, then you attack the rate problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can you, I know you mentioned a little bit um, what type of things that we can do, like window replacement, insulation, HVAC. Any, uh, can you kind of run down some of the, the more, most common items that people can do with this loan? Mm-hmm. So you can do, we do everything from additions. We can do accessory dwelling units. Oh, really? If it's an FHA, it has to be connected. But if it's mm-hmm. a Fannie Mae loan, mm-hmm. it could be freestanding. Mm-hmm. So that might be a, an approach to attack the energy conservation while you get some income. Right. But you can do additions. We do stairs. We, we replace stairs. You can put a well, a septic in. You can do remediations. If there's like oil spills, asbestos, lead-based paint, you can do all that. Wow. Any kind of gut rehab. HUD's kind of crazy. They'll let you tear it down to the foundation and rebuild it. And then they say that it's a renovation because you're renovating the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fannie Mae doesn't like that. Yeah. They, they did not do uh, tear downs. Right. It's just to the studs. So, but you can do a gut rehab. You can rearrange the interior walls. You can make it handicapped accessible. Oh, wow. You can change the lighting. You can change the electrical. Mm -hmm. solar geothermal you can put a geothermal system in wow Uh, pretty much like honestly as long as it is as long as you get the value for the improvement in the appraised value right usually you can do it hud says no luxury items but a luxury item for hud is not granite countertops and stainless steel appliances Mm -hmm. that's normal in the neighborhood a luxury item for hud is a bowling alley in your basement or a (laughs) swimming pool or a tennis court (laughs) or an outdoor kitchen (laughs) You know, if you gotta right. have guts in your bathtub, put it in the house, and then it, then you, you're fine. But if you put it on your deck, then it's a jacuzzi, and that's a luxury item. So yeah, it doesn't right. matter interpretation. But I that's see. what HUD says when they say luxury items. And Fannie Mae has no restriction; just the price. Oh, value. really? Okay. Price value. It all hinges on okay. the appraisal. Okay. And one last question is: I think you did mention uh, when I first talked to you about paying off the pace. Um, Mm-hmm. loan or uh, existing loan you right. can use that with the uh, renovation loan or is that a different no you can put we can pay off the pace loan with with actually just a regular conforming loan you can pay it off but you could also pay it off with the renovation loan so we're gonna pay it off mm-hmm. and you have one mortgage so, so so that does it have to qualify in some ways like uh, in order to use that like that did it have to be a uh, loan that you use to put solar on, that like often people are using PACE loans. And, mm-hmm. um, uh, or if, like say I have a loan that I used, like in, unsecured loan that I used to improve my energy efficiency. Can I use that to, for refi to, can I use a refi to pay that off? You know, I'm pretty sure you can, but I want to check and get back to you because okay. because of COVID, a lot we had a lot of go- overlays and stuff. Right. And, and we have. I'm pretty sure you can. But yeah. I want, I, I'm not going to say I'm 100 percent certain. Okay. I know okay. you can pay off pace loans on regular conventional loans. So if you're right. just just doing a, a rate and term refi, mm-hmm. you know you can pay off. You yes, you could. Well, they would just pay off your pace loan. You'd have one more. Yeah. more. So that's yeah. a, but yeah. I will verify how it is for purchases and for refis and I'll just send you an email and you can put it on your Facebook page. Okay, sounds good. So um, just quickly, just so that people may not know what PACE loan is, can mm-hmm. you explain that for us? Yeah, so a PACE loan is a, is a loan, I uh, forget what the acronym stands for. I think it's, I used to know this, I but I know, can't I think of it. <laughs> it went right on my brain, but it's, a, it's an, a loan to make your home energy efficient and secured by the house. Right. So it doesn't go with the person. It's it's a lien against the house. Right, right. And so when you transfer a title, well, you have to resolve the lien. Right. Right, which is why they have to be paid off. Right. So, so it makes it a little bit complicated. More when complicated. So if the yeah. seller's not going to pay it off, mm-hmm. then and you're going to buy his house. Well, you got to figure out what to do with the pace lien. Right. And so paying it off is the best thing. Right. Yeah. Before you <laughs> before, before you acquire it. I see. So yeah. that's what they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much. I am um, right on time, 4.30. Okay. 
<laughs> Danica, do we have any questions? You know, believe it or not, uh, they already, uh, he already answered one of the main questions, which was, you know, how do the interest rates compare to the standard purchase loan? You already answered right. that. So I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. William. And really important, William, if you don't mind, I'd love for people to know how to get in touch with you. Um, if you don't mind uh, just giving a quick uh, information on how to get in touch with you and so forth. Only if you don't mind, William. Only if I don't mind. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, my email is wbrown, small letters, at financeofamerica.com. That's my logo in the back. So wbrown at financeofamerica.com. My phone number, which is with me all the time. In fact, I just turned it off because it's been buzzing, is 317-371-6127. So lots of sevens. 317-371-6127. You can text me. You can call me. I'd be happy to talk to you. I can answer your questions, whether I can help you get a mortgage or not. We won't know until we have a conversation. And honestly, it doesn't work for some people. I, I have the same conversation with everybody. I talked to somebody yesterday, and he thought he would use his own money rather than pay for inspections and title updates because he didn't want to do that. So it's entirely up to you. Yeah. My job is to give you your options and maybe advice based on your particular situation, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and even with the higher rate, a lot of times on refinances, the higher rate's not a problem because you're buying equity, right? So you're rolling in your closing costs. And so maybe I've had people look at the cost of a refi versus the cost of paying one discount point at the close of their refi yeah. and adding, adding, taking out of their equity. So they're not out of pocket. Right. They just paid a point, six grand, say it's a big house, six grand. So their mortgage went up by $6,000 their payment changed by five or seven dollars, not a lot. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Now their rate is two point, you know, two point eight eight seven five. So yeah. That's, that's the other way to think about it. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much, William. This was such a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you so much for all the helpful information. So thank Danica, you. if we don't have any other questions, we can we can thank William and say goodbye. Okay, Sounds thanks, wonderful. Thank you so much, William. And we'll be sure pleasure. to get you a copy of this out to you as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. Let's, uh, for let's talk Thank you, William. Let's yes. talk again. I wouldn't mind doing a, a thing that we talked about in terms of eating, eating healthy. <laughs> I, would love, I would love to yeah. do that. I'm not necessarily from advocating. I'm just trying to give people options, right? And this is an option that's like off the chart. <laughs> <laughs> education. And that's what we yeah. offer is education. It doesn't okay. always have to be real estate. <laughs> okay. All right. Take okay. care. Thank you. Thank you so much, William. Thank bye, you, bye, Danica. Bye.